The Zeebzob Podcast is brought to you in part by Global Derby Society, globalderbysociety.proboards.com. Sign up now. Use promo code MOODSWING for your free personalized welcome message. Listening to the Zeeb Zob Pinewood Derby Roundup, Episode 6. Sponsored by Goat Boy Products, makers of high quality Pinewood Derby tools. This week, Scott Black, down for Derby. And now, here's your host, Zeeb Zob. All right, welcome back to the Zeebzob podcast, all you derby dorks. I am your host, Zeebzob. My forum is zeebzob.proboards.com. My blog is zeebzob.wordpress.com, and my Twitter feed is at Zeebzob. We did get a new follower this week, so IRC Geek, Mr. Jerry Wise, thank you very much. Okay, um, over the past oh, week or so, Seems a lot of new racers have been coming out of the woodwork um, out of Wisconsin here. So there's a, a couple of guys that may be coming out to the Zeebzob Speed Shop for some testing. Uh, some new guys to the uh, whole hobby. Of course, like everybody else, they're getting into it through uh, the Cub Scouts with their kids. So uh, that's great. A lot of new racers out of Wisconsin. Love that. So the, uh, the membership to the forum is starting to grow, uh, which, is, uh, which is really good. So look for some new racers uh, coming out of Wisconsin. We're still uh, behind all those guys out in Utah. Those guys are uh, right now top of the world in the pine wood hobby, but uh, hopefully someday we will uh, start to reel them in a little bit. So um, look for some, some new names. Um, and along with that, I did get a little, uh, I read a little comment from BSB uh, wondering what's up with all the uh, Indian names that we have for the cities around here in in Wisconsin, like uh, McQuanago, Waukesha, stuff like that. Boy, BSB, I tell you, this stuff is it's second nature to me because I grew up with it. But yeah, a lot of times when I talk to people that aren't from this area, you know, we got towns like Shaniqua, Neshota, Manaqua, Akonomowak, all these Indian names in Wisconsin that uh, people just like, what the heck is this? So, but yeah, again, that's second nature. Um, and it's uh it's kind of funny but all right let's talk about the race that we had yesterday over at npwdrl out in utah that is the first of their ice series Uh, again that was held yesterday so i'll go over the results of that i'll let you know who top qualified and who ended up winning each division all right starting in the basics class again this is your um, more of your scout type car with the heavy uh, 2.4 gram wheels, no fenders. Uh, Derby Dad for Hire was the top qualifier, but uh, in the finals it was WK Racing out of uh, Hawaii that took that one. In street stock, uh, these are your uh, fat wheel, two, 2.0 gram wheels with fenders. Street stock, Skippy Kicky was top qualifier, but Hogan Racing was the uh, overall winner in the uh, finals. In Street Pro, these are fat wheels, but they're lightened, uh, so there's no weight restriction on those, and, and they have uh, extended wheelbases, and most of them just have rear fenders. Quick Time Derby, Mr. Joe Redfern uh, took top qualifier honors, and he was the overall winner. In the Eliminator class, these are the ones with the razor wheels. Kinzer Racing, uh, also out of Utah, took first and, um, I should say, top qualified and was also the winner. Over in Unlimited, and we'll talk a little bit more about this because this was uh, the class that I raced in. Kinzer racing again, top qualified. I uh, finished second in the qualifying rounds to Kinzer, uh, which was, you know, for me, awesome because uh, there was a lot of 
lot of fast cars in there. Bullet. Um, there was Quick Time Derby, of course. He's always fast. Uh, Quad Dad had a couple of fast cars in there. Um, so the four that went on to the finals were Kinzer, myself, Bullet, and Quick Time. But in the finals, old Zeebzob laid a turd, and uh, I ended up fourth for the finals. But uh, Kinzer came home with the victory. I believe Bullet was second, and uh, and Quick Time was third. Now in in the in the finals of that race, it was kind of interesting. I was watching that live, and in the the third run, they accidentally put my car in the wrong lanes. They had me and Bullet switched, and I saw him, saw the cars go down and. Um, I called Joel right away, uh, quick time, to let him know they had to rerun that one. Uh, even though I, I knew that the time that I got was the one that should have been for bullet racing, it would have been a better time. I ended up kind of screwing myself. But, you know, um, you, you want to keep it fair. You don't want bullet to, to get the crappy time that I ended up laying down in that lane. Um, and that was a thing for the for the finals. Uh, now, now there's a four lane track out there, and typically the two outer lanes, when they're when they're in a race, two outer lanes have the advantage arrow wise. So they're that's where you'll get your your best runs. Well, it turns out that my the first two races I was in each outside lane, so I started with the good lanes and I finished with the bad lanes. And for me personally, that's that's not really how I like it. I like to start in the in the slow lanes and hopefully have the the faster lanes for the final runs uh but it didn't work out that way and, and it, i don't think it would have mattered anyways but um yeah for whatever reason my car ran better in the prelims in the finals and it, i mean it's just by a couple of thousandths of a second so it's not a lot but it just seems that that car i have when i'm running against cars that are you know really equal to mine um, it just doesn't do as good. So if you're up against a slower car, you know, maybe my car will get out in front and, and handle that arrow better. But if I get a little bit behind the cars that are next to me, yeah, it just doesn't react. So, but at any rate, Kinzer ended up winning the uh, Unlimited, uh, the bearing cars. So uh, congrats to him. That's uh, uh, that's awesome because QuickTime has been the dominant guy uh, for well over a year. So to, to get a victory away from, from Joel, is definitely saying something so congrats to uh chris kinzer then over in the street rods uh, now there was there was only one round there was uh just basically a finals and quick time derby came away with that um i'll go over to uh in in basics there was 28 cars overall street stock 43 street pro had 14 cars eliminator there were 20 cars unlimited had 18 and street rod had eight and that's why they're there was no finals. It was just the, uh, you know, the, the four runs that you got in the basically the, the one round. So again, congrats to all those guys: WK, Hogan, Quick Time, Kinzer, Kinzer, and Quick Time. Definitely uh, a tall order to get a win over there. So now I know there was a lot of guys that um, that didn't race this this month, um, taking a little time off. I know. Um, Goat Boy didn't race. He's real busy. Uh, JBD didn't race. I don't know what's going on with him. Um, but there was, there was a lot of names that that weren't racing this month. And I think it's just, you know, the first first race of the year. And also, I know a lot of guys are, are going to be um, concentrating on the Nationals. So they may take a few races off in this first series to make sure they're um, not only prepared with their cars, but, you know, saving money financially to be able to make the trip and and uh, be able to spend some time out there at a live race. So again, um, Nationals coming up in April, um, and it's in Omaha, Nebraska. If you can make it, I definitely um, say, yeah, that's a, it's a good race to go to, centrally located within the United States. So, um, and I know, oh, uh, down for Derby, he did not race this uh, month either. He is a... Uh, really a street ride guy lately he's coming on strong so uh, he looks like he took the month off as well and we'll be talking to him later but um yeah it was a good time the feed was good um at least from what i saw i know i'd heard john mention that they were having issues um but it was nothing that i had noticed um it, it actually went, went really fast and i don't know if that's just because some races were taking the month off and maybe the car count was down but um you know it was it was over really quickly and and you know typically these things can kind of go on into the night when there's a lot of classes and a lot of cars 
but it just seemed yesterday, and it maybe it was just me, just seemed that it was over really quick. I was uh, just kind of checking in throughout the day, waiting for the uh, unlimited class to come up. And before I knew it, they were um, getting into that class. And so I, uh, uh, as actually, yeah, I mean, it, it's nice to get it over with and, and be done with it quickly. Um, I'd rather have that than sometimes these things drag on. But um, credit to the NPWDRL guys, they kept that race moving. And so when you have one that drags on, sometimes it's uh, it's hard to, you know, sit there all night in front of your computer waiting for your car to run, especially if you've only got one car. But uh, good job to all the guys there. I know I saw uh, Cam Car there. Dennis Campbell was out helping out. Uh, John, of course, uh, quick time, Joel was out there and I saw, uh, Kinzer on camera. So I'm sure there's a lot of other guys there to help out, but those are the main guys that are there, uh, month in, month out helping out. And, you know, um, big hats off to quick time. Cause I don't know if many of you know this, the, uh, the races are held in the, like the Saratoga Springs area of Utah, which is like a little bit South of Salt Lake city. But Joel lives in St. George, which is actually like a four hour drive, I believe. And he makes that trip every month. So, um, yeah, he's got some dedication. So, um, thanks to quick time for always being there to help out at this time. I would like to welcome our guest this week on the phone. We have Mr. Scott black known as down for Derby racing. So Scott, why don't you go ahead and tell us a little bit about yourself. My name's Scott Black. I'm from uh, Orchid, California. Um, I'm 41. I have uh, I have three kids, a stepson. Um, he's 14. Um, that's how, actually how, how uh, I got into Derby with him through Scouts. Um, I have a daughter. She's, uh, she's six years old. And I have a, a three-year-old son. He just had his birthday today. So Excellent. Okay, so what better way to celebrate your son's birthday by doing a podcast? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. We just actually um, uh, got rid of some company. We had a house full earlier. Had a spaghetti dinner for him. It's his favorite meal. So awesome. With Pinewood Derby stuff, how'd you get into it? Um. Well, uh, my stepson Hunter. He uh, got it was about eight years ago. Um, you know, he got into Cub Scouts and then uh, came to Pinewood Derby. And uh, so, you know, everybody got their kits and stuff. And, uh, you know, that's pretty much, just, you know, how it started with, you know, with most guys that get into league racing. Um, yeah, you know, that, that, that first car, it was something special. You know, I'll never forget it. You know, it was a, a good little bonding experience and a competitive experience for us. And, uh, you know, we got our butt handed to us, you know, like most people do the first year. And, uh, right. I don't know, it, it was a lot of fun, you know, and, and then, you know, four more years of that. And, uh, you know, every year we got a little bit better and, um, you know, found newer techniques, you know, we did through all the vast ocean of, of time with derby information on the, on the internet. And, uh, you know, first ended up at, uh, PDDR and then, uh, you know, uh, you know, now, now, you know, ended up at, uh, NPWDRL, but, um, yeah, it, it's been a lot of fun. Um, those first cars, you know, they're memorable, you know, we'll, hopefully we'll, we'll always have them. You know, I, I still have my, my derby car. Um, that's, that's actually the first start is, uh, I did one year of Cup Scouts when I was a kid and we did Pinewood Derby then. And, yeah, that's, uh, uh, same with me. I did one year, uh, also. So, so we still have that car, um, We'll bust it out every once in a while and and run it down the track or, or take it to a a local event or something like that. So how does how does that one hold up? Um, it's actually not that bad. You know, we used to take it to practice night and it would beat like you know seventy five percent of the cars there. Really? Um, but that was with new wheels. You know, the original wheels are long long gone, cracked. You know, and and they're uh, they were no good, but you know, with some newer techniques applied to the car, you know, it was it was faster, you know, sure. uh, especially kids that weren't uh, you know riding three wheels, and uh, you know, I had like a front weighted car where this one was, you know, even back then, it was weighted towards the rear, and it was just a simple wedge, 
you know, and uh, yeah, so that was pretty good. Um, looks like crap. You know, <laughs> it's, been, it's been through the mill. You know, it's been down the driveway. You know, plenty of times, but uh, sure. Yeah, I'm just fortunate to still have it. So. Um, okay, so you mentioned you uh, started out at PDDR. Did you uh, did you do any racing there? I was looking back not too long ago, and I I do remember seeing your name, but this was you know before um, I knew you. Did you get a chance to race there? No, almost. Um, I was getting ready to pull the trigger, and you know then you know that's when you know stuff hit the fan, and you know the migration occurred. So uh, you know you know. My, my first race was with John, you know, at MPWDRL. But sure. uh, I, I was on that board for for a little while, you know, asking questions, and uh, took took me a long time before I actually asked my first, you know, joined up and asked my first question. But um, I lurked for a while, for, yeah, you know, yeah, quite a long time. I almost pulled the trigger a few times and um, just didn't do it. But uh, but yeah, you know, when I first did, I was glad I did. Sure. So, you know, was, now my my first uh, my first recollection of you was when we started doing the team racing, and uh, you got drafted onto the Sofa King Fast Race Team. Right. Yeah. <laughs> that was a lot of fun. Yeah, that was a lot of fun. You know, I was really honored. Uh, you know, to be on the team with you guys. You know, you guys are seasoned, and uh, and you know, Goat Boy. You know, is the captain. You know, and you guys are all turned out to be really good guys you know I'd, I'd always looked on the board and seen you guys you know i'd watched your races and and i knew who you guys were sure but you guys didn't really know who i was so yeah um, and you know from my perspective when uh that first race came we we didn't know anything about you and then you did this street stock car and for those um you know people that don't really know much about the team racing you know we had four guys on our team goat boy myself uh quad dad and you and you were our street stock guy, and I, I was so impressed with your with your car, how well you did in in. The, I mean, you put me and Mario to shame. If it weren't for uh, <laughs> for you and Goat Boy, I mean, uh, you, you guys got us a lot of points, and it actually did make me step on my game. I did the street pro, and uh, my first attempt at it that first month was was terrible. But then I really. You know, took some time and and tried to do it well because I didn't. I was getting showing up pretty bad. So, but that was a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah. You know, that was that was really cool. You know, uh, I think about halfway through that little series, there uh, they, there was a wheel base rule change. So, um, you know, that, that's when that was lifted. You know, mm-hmm. no more uh, pure stock style. You know, wheel base on them. And uh, yeah, I remember I, I built two cars, two street stocks through that. And I think the first one lasted one race, and then the rules changed. Um, and then I, I built an extended wheelbase car. But, um, yeah, that first car, I, I put a lot of time into it. And, you know, I, I tried out that, uh, you know, putting graphics on the top. And, uh, you know, it took a lot of time painting it. And, you know, right at the last minute, right after I plugged my wheels in and was getting ready to throw it on the tuning board, um, it was like a ghost came up behind me and slapped it right out of my hand. Oh. And, uh, you know, fenders cracked in pieces all over the floor. So sort of just, you know, held my breath, picked it up, glued it back together, <laughs> and named it Mount Set. Yeah, uh, okay. That's pretty much what happened to it. So Yeah, but, uh, that's uh, that's a great feeling, isn't it, when that happens? We've, we've all done that. You get a car running good, and then you just drop it, and something breaks, and... Uh, it's you know yeah you know it, it, it's it's one of those things where it, it's like I, I couldn't even figure out how I drop it you know it was like someone's going ha ha like that's the last minute so but uh you know I've done that enough times now where it almost doesn't even really uh, affect me you know I just pick up pick up the pieces and glue them back together sure and just keep going but uh and how long did you uh, did you race that uh, that one car that that street stock before you moved on into other classes. Uh, now, for those that don't know Scott, he's really come a long way in the um, in the street rod uh, division, but you did some other classes too. Um, well, I, I've, I started in street stock, um, then I went to street rod, mm-hmm. and I have built one unlimited. Um, 
did one race with that. It uh, almost derailed. <laughs> so I sort of, you know, tuck my tail in. Uh, you know, I'll, I'll continue with uh, Unlimited at another time. But, uh, but yeah, you know, um, I, I'm really liking Street Rod a lot right now. Um, it's it's such a cool class. You know, it adds a lot of other elements, you know, to the build and stuff. Sure. Um, now the uh, the sure. the first car I saw um, from you, you sent to the uh, Nationals in 2013. So I actually got to see it firsthand, and that was the Snotty Scotty car. Right. Yeah. And that car, uh, what is that? Like a GTX? Is that what the body is on that one? Yeah, 69 GTX. That possible potential energy advantage with the GTX. So that that's strictly why I chose that. Um, it, you know, it's it's a cool looking car and everything, and, and it. It turned out to be a pretty good car for me. So. Sure, sure. Um, so, yeah, the Snotty Scotty car, though, like I was saying, I was able to see that firsthand and was really impressed with the amount of work that you do underneath the car. Right, yeah. Um, you know, it, it, that car actually first started out, um, I ran it backwards. Uh, I, You know, I, I, I thought I saw a potential energy you know, advantage by uh, the extended trunk area by reversing the body. I um, remember that. Yeah, I, I thought I could get more, you know, weight up the hill that way. And uh, the rules at that time weren't written. To, you couldn't do that. So, so, uh, yeah, so you I got, did that. You got away with it for one month, didn't you? Yeah, I got away with <laughs> one month. Uh, and, you know, and then I had to flip the, the body around and rebuild the chassis a little bit. But uh, when I sent it in the first time like that, it... Uh, you know, it kind of didn't feel right anyway. You know, sure. you're not supposed to see, see a car going down backwards <laughs> down a, a drag strip. So, but, but that's uh, that's the thing I like about you is you, you're thinking outside the box like that. You know, and we'll talk in a, in a little bit about the the wheel weights that you help design, um, and some other things that, like the small front wheel, the pine car wheel. I know you had a hand right. in that, but um, getting back to the Snotty Scotty car. Uh, one of the best races I've ever seen proxy was the race between you and Ted Bull. He had that arrow vet. Yeah, I'll never forget it. You know, like I think I, I told you, you know, after I won that, I uh, my wife kind of found out how serious it was for me uh, when I turned around and I had one tear going down my cheek. So, <laughs> you know, it, it you know it, it, it was pretty emotional. You know, your first win. You know, especially at the level we race at. Sure. You know regardless of the class, you know, it's, uh, it's an accomplishment and, and, you know, I, I felt really good about it, you know, especially against Ted Bull, you know, at that time he was kicking butt in that class. Yeah. Know, he so. had that. And it was really cool because he had that little small aero vet and you had that big GTX. So the, the difference in size of the cars was kind of, uh, interesting to watch. He got, you know, the aero advantage, but boy, man, you just powered right on through and when when it was just in the finals and it was just your your two cars and he didn't have other cars to get air off of his car reacted differently right yeah it, you know he did he started to get a little loose and uh you know i i, I think you know part of the reason why it, you know he had a, a short wheelbase and um you know I, i'm not sure what would cause you know being sandwiched between two cars uh a car to become more stable, but, um, you know, part of what I attribute this, the stability of my car in that race was the, uh, just what I do to the underside, you know, right. having a, a clean, a clean underside, you know, basically the same thing as what we do on top of a, a street stock, you know, uh, and, and I really, I, I feel like that, that helped, uh, sort of neutralize things out and help stabilize the car. But, um, sure. that, that was a lot of fun. You know, I, I, I was glad to be a part of that race because it was really cool. You know, we tied, I don't know how many times, three times or something like that, and we had to have a sudden death runoff. Yeah, um, and then uh, I still remember Joel going up to the uh, the timer waiting for the uh, the other lanes to finally time out at 10 seconds, and he gave you the win, you know, and you just barely beat him, but it was really ex exciting. Yeah, it, actually the, the final time uh, was tied on the timer. Um, right, and it and and had, the to, go had to throw out. Who, you know, who got the, the win? The next yeah. digit or whatever. So, mm -hmm. yeah, it was super close. Yeah. That, was, that was really exciting. And then, of course, uh, just recently, you are the 
Man of the Mountain at NPWDRL for 2014. Right. Yes. Uh, yes. I I couldn't believe it when that happened. Uh, you know, I, I thought I screwed up my wheels. Uh, had an issue with uh, you know polishing my bores. I I thought I chunked them out a little bit, but you know, it's John and uh, JBD. You know, Benji. He uh, they told me that you know you'll be fine. Mm-hmm. You know, just run the wheels anyway, and and uh, I, I trusted them, and it, it it worked out. So yeah, it did. Um, so yeah, and that was with yeah, a pre- different you know, appreciate car. Appreciate that from them. You know, good advice. So. Yeah, and that's that was with a different car too. That was with a Mustang, correct? Yeah, it's the seventy uh, ish, the seventy Mustang uh, funny car. Okay, um, yeah. Those funny cars have become popular because they have the extended wheelbase. I know uh, Quad Dad runs those big Vegas. So that's uh, interesting to get some of those new bodies like that. Right, yeah, you know, and and overall, um, you know, depending on what it is, it, they're kind of an easier build, build because you don't have to attach bumpers. Um, uh, a, lot, a lot of times the windows are, uh, they come with side windows also. Oh, um, sure. You know, and they're, you know, like, like how I like to attach them, you know, some of the mounts at the rear, and they look pretty cool when you... Uh, tilt them up on the back, you know, just like a real funny car body. So, but, but yeah, you know, there's, I don't know if it's going to be all about the funny car body because they're, you know, especially with the, uh, the lane change now, how we're going to run the the outside, outside lanes. Um, you know, that changes things up a little bit. It'll, it'll give the less aerodynamic cars, you know, a little boost. So, um, you don't have to necessarily pick the most aerodynamic car, Right, right. you know, running, running like that but um it did you know it helps but sure. it, it's not as i guess not as uh, important as if you're sandwiched between cars you know right. but um, well, you you've definitely got a, a handle on those street rods and for anybody out there who is interested in getting into the street rods and maybe need a little bit of help i know that you do offer services where you will you know build either a chassis or a full car for somebody so anybody that wants to you can send scott a p.m and and uh, work something out. I know that uh, um, it's something you enjoy. Yeah, I actually just got one today. Oh, is that um, right? Good. Yeah, anybody so, out there, send them a quick PM and, and uh, get on your way with the street rods. It's one of the funnest classes. It really is. Yeah, so um, are you going to jump back into street rod? Yeah, you know, it's it's one of those things where I really like it. It's one of my favorite classes, and I've got this Mustang that's uh, I always like the way it looks, but it's really slow. And I've got some other cars that I used to run back in in the pddr days and for people that don't know back then they would have a theme where everybody would have to run like a you know a 69 camaro or firebird or they had to run a a 55 through 57 chevy or a charger or whatever and i've got some cars that i built back then that i really like and i'd like to put back together one of them was a 69 um daytona charger but that thing is just like it's almost nine inches long and it really wouldn't fit the rules you know right didn't you have a corvette also yeah, I did. I, I built a uh, 78 Corvette, and I painted it like this beige color because um, I got one of those out in my garage, you know. So um, it's a car I've had since I was, um, geez, I was like 19, I think, when I got that car, and I'm 46 now. So, But, I mean, I never drive the thing anymore, but uh, it's still sitting there. It looks pretty good still. <laughs> yeah, 19 with a Corvette. Wow. <laughs> Yeah, I had. <laughs> if you'd have seen how ridiculous I was, I had this really long hair, and uh, you know, I was a skinny kid in the Corvette. And, yeah, I thought I had the world by by the tail, and uh, I was a I was just a goofball. But anyways, uh, that's enough about, about me. A goofball with a Corvette. Yeah, yeah. So I I, I thought I was cool, um, but at any rate, so. <laughs> um, all right, now getting into um, a little bit more of like your thinking out of the box. Now, recently the big thing has been these um, these weight systems that that go inside the the rear wheel wells, and you uh, came up with that idea and were um, instrumental in getting those out to market with with John and his store, and um, and he's uh, just re- redone them and he's named them the Down for Derby weight system now. Right, yeah. Um, it, you know, it, it's something that you know I, I'd thought about for a while. Um, you know, my, my first thought of it um, was actually looking at one of QuickTime's cars. 
there was some discussion on the board about moving the comm further back. You know, I, that's always been a discussion. You know, uh, with the, you know, with the the half inch being like uh, kind of the gold standard. You mm-hmm. know, to try to get your car stable under, you know, half an inch is a challenge, and the, you know, has more potential energy, but the car's uh, uh, a little more uncontrollable. Uncontrollable, rather, and uh, you know, it takes a little longer to tune. Um, so I, what I saw on QuickTime's car was, uh, you know, a picture he posted of, you know, he had some weight taped to the car, and uh, you know, with with your standard build with cubes, uh, you can only fit so many cubes behind the, the rear axle, um, and then you know, you, you throw the the rest in front, usually around twenty four cubes, um, and if you want to move your comm back any further than that, uh, you generally would have to increase the profile of your car a little bit. Right. Um, so but by staring at that picture of his car, I was thinking how that could be accomplished um, without increasing the profile of the car. Um, so that, you know, looking at his wheel well right there, I kind of, it sort of sort of clicked. You know, there's an empty space right there, and it's hidden from the wind, and it, it could actually uh, keep wind out of the wheel well. Um, so I, I went ahead and I started building and, and I, I made the, the center of the car, um, you know, with half that weight being behind the rear axle now. So, um, you're pushing more, you know, you have more weight up the hill. Um, and at the same time you're blocking, you know, the wind from getting in the, the rear wheels. So it was sort of a twofold kind of a thing. Um, but, but, it, you know, it, it originated from that looking at his car and, uh, you know, trying to figure out a way to, uh, you know, uh, keep the profile of the car the same uh, while still moving more weight towards the back. And the the wind deflector was sort of a secondary thought on that. And, you know, that was a, you know, sort of a, a dumb moment. Well, yeah, it does that too. So, right, right. You know, and, and before, you know, I think back on the board of PDDR when, um, was it the... What are the cars with the three wheels? Uh, pro stocks? Yep. The street pros? Yeah, street pro. Um, right right about the time I remember reading where, uh, you know, guys were started to flip their wheels around mm-hmm. in the back. And part of the discussion that, there was, you know, cupping the air in between the wheels because that was part of the benefit. You know, sure. trapping the, the, the air between the inside of the wheel and the track. Um you know, along with the, the added compression of the wheel, because now the tread's better. Um, right. And and I just I, I remembered that, and um, you know I remembered seeing guys with cars where they were covering the right behind the, the top of the rear fenders, uh, the area. You know, just making a little fin that goes back and covers the top of the the wheel cavity, um, but no one was touching the the underside. Um, so it all sort of just clicked at the same time, you know, and without those previous discussions and what other people have done and shown, I wouldn't have been able to think of that. So, um, so it's not just, you know, it wasn't just, you know, me as far as that goes. So Sure. But, um, you know, but along with that, you, you have sent me some pictures of some unique cars that you have been building, um, some that, you know, maybe didn't pan out, but. Um, when I saw them, I thought, geez, you know, there was that one that had like almost no body in the middle. It was like two rails down the sides. And then you had those, uh, those types of weights in the back, but also you, um, you came up with yeah. that pine car wheel in the front too. Um, yeah, the, uh, that was a really fun car. You know, that, that was after discovering the wheel weight, um, you know, system of, of doing that. And, you know, I was trying to, at that point, I was trying to pack as much weight as I could inside the wheel cavities. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, I had set weight, I had made rails and set weight next to the rear wheels on top. Um, and the thought of that was just trying to decrease the body to a small airfoil in the front, which was enough to, like, uh, give the car enough uh, structural stability, but at the same time trip the timer. Sure. Um, and, you know, reducing skin friction and stuff like that. But the car had a lot of other issues. Um, and it was too far outside of the box. You know, I didn't expect a lot from it. You know, it, it didn't take last place and that, you know, I was pleased with that. So, yeah. but yeah, you know, and then, uh, you know, the, the pine car wheel, um, 
you know, then again, you know, without someone else posting something or, you know, beginning of someone else's idea, I, I would have never thought of that. And the first person I remember doing something similar was Five Kids. He he posted a, a reducing a stock BSA wheel. Okay. Uh, and I think even an older style BSA BSA wheel reducing the diameter. Um, and at that point, I was playing around with the, the lifted wheel a little bit. Um, I was actually removing the hub altogether, um, trying to move weight more towards the center line of the car, you know, uh, by flip, flipping the wheel around and then taking the hub out. Um, but I'd never thought of, you know, reducing the diameter until he did that. So I started messing with doing that. And then uh, my birthday came along, and my, my wife threw me a Pinewood Derby birthday party. Really? Um, and instead of BSA kits, she ordered uh, pine car kits. Okay. And so that that's how I ended up with, you know, a bunch of pine car wheels. And uh, I was just looking at one one day, and, you know, I threw it on the scale. And I was like, that thing's pretty heavy. You know, yeah, the, they're like 3.6, the I think. Yeah. And so I just started uh, sanding it down, and as soon as I got to two grams, I stopped. And uh, set it up next to a, a regular stock BSA wheel, and it damn near fit inside of it you know so, <laughs> yeah it, it just about does you're right yeah you know and then and then also you know it after, i know it's like a it's a pass-through design you know it has spokes but after you tape both sides you know it actually becomes cleaner and more square and and and, and flat sure. versus having a lot of you know texture to it like a bsa wheel does with the lettering and stuff on the outside so right, um, right. yeah it just it made sense to do that and then i did that and then uh you know what? What validation? The validation on both of those ideas is when uh, I got a response from QuickTime. You know, from it. You oh. know, saying that hey, that you know that's a good idea. He told me he liked the weight the first time I did it. Sure. So that sort of uh, gave a little bit of validation to the idea. You know, if the number one guy is, you know, likes the idea, then you know it makes you, you know, move forward with it a little, with a little more uh, ease or yeah. whatever. So absolutely. Um, and and that's the thing about Joel. He's a, I I really like Joel. He's a he's a straight shooter, and he he gives you you know good good feedback, good advice. And yeah, you're right. He's he's the number one guy right now. So if he says, uh, uh, you know, that something is interesting to him, you know, you better pay attention. Right. You know, and you know that speaks. You know, for me anyway. You know, I, I trusted his opinion. You know, those guys see tons of cars. You know, every year. Sure. And you know he touches all of our cars. You know, so he. If there's anybody that, that knows something that, that might work, you know, it'd be him and John or who else? Cam Car's there a lot too, right? Yep, Cam Car, Kinzer, those guys, yeah, they're just... Uh, yeah, Kinzer, Kinzer yep. also. Absolutely. Those guys, you know, they they see it all going through there and uh, any, you know, any advice from them, or, you know, I'm sure it's golden. So that's sort of how I took that. And, you know, he also commented on the pine car wheel too mm -hmm. and same thing, made me think, you know, it had validity to it you know and i also talked to john about it john he thought it was a you know good idea and stuff so uh, the guys started using it and then yeah it's pretty cool just you know watching it all happen and stuff so sure yeah and i know what you're saying about that when when quicktime says yeah i like that idea i was uh talking to him once about my tuning board and on my tuning board i've actually got a, a rail that the car rides down for about a foot and then the rail just basically disappears and the car is then in, in like a free roll so that you get the same start to it every time. And I showed him a picture of that and he's like, oh, I really like that idea. But truth truth be told, I stole that idea from Rocket Car. <laughs> so, but... Uh, well, yeah, you know, you know, if he, if he likes that idea, then, you know, I don't... You know, that makes sense. You know, it, it get your car to release like it would you know, on the track. Sure. Yeah, you know, then you, you get the need same to get a consistent start. release every time. Right, so. exactly. So what is in store for you uh, for this year? I know that, you know, obviously you're the big street ride guy. You'd like the street stocks. Are you going to uh, try to make it to the Nationals? I know a lot of people are trying to go out there. I would like to. Um, I'm actually planning on it, but it's sort of uh, kind of hit and miss because uh, I don't like to fly. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, I really... I really don't like to fly, so uh, I like airplanes. Uh -huh. um, you know, it, I don't have any issues with airplanes, but <laughs> I have an issue with me being in an airplane. So, uh, you know, it, 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 there's a good chance I will. Okay. But, what, uh, what about driving? How long of a drive would it be for you? 
Uh, probably too long. Okay. Yeah, because you're a <laughs> it, you're a stay at home dad, right? So you got kids to take care of. Yep. Yeah, yeah, I got to take care of the kids, so I have to coordinate. Um, you know, being gone. Uh, you know, fortunately, my wife was she's off on the weekend, so okay. Um, I could probably, you know, it's probably it's it's doable for me. Um, and I I would I really I you know I'd like to go. I, you know, a live event. I'm sure there's nothing like it. You know, there's a good chance that I'll I'll be there. Okay, um, that would so, be really cool. Are, are, you, are you going? Um, yeah, right now. Um, you know, I've got the the thumbs up from Mrs. Zebzab and and uh, Ian's Ian's all uh, you know looking forward to it too. So we always have a good time. And Mario is talking about going. So I mean, if we all go, we can we could possibly get the Sofa King Fast Racing team together. Right. Yeah. That'd be a lot of fun. Yeah, that was a great name. <laughs> <laughs> that was a lot of fun. Um, well, we got reduced to the Sofa Kings. <laughs> yeah, and then somebody called us the Couch Kings or something. I don't know. We just uh, they were making fun <laughs> of us, but that's all right. We had a good time. Um, speaking of, uh, I mentioned you're a stay at home dad, but you you were telling me that you uh, you ha- you had a a bunch of jobs throughout the years, and one of them that you could probably uh, uh, talk for days about is uh, UPS. You used to work for for that, and uh, you could probably give us some insight on what goes on in the shipping world. I know a lot of us have uh, have gripes about our cars arriving in those boxes all bashed up. But um, how long did you work there? Um, I worked there for about three years, uh, ni- about nineteen to twenty-two, okay. maybe twenty to twenty-three. Um, it, uh, you know, I, I worked in loading. You know, loaded the uh, the the, the or unload. I would unload the big trailers, you know, and stuff, and and that's where most of the damage would occur. Okay. <laughs> you so, know, uh, yeah. unloading those big trailers because one of the main issues was, uh, you know, if you get replaced if if you don't make a certain quota, on, and you have to, and they time you, so sure. you have to have all those boxes out of that trailer onto the conveyor belt by a certain time. Um, yeah, yeah, I've got some friends that you know, work for UPS, and they they say that there will actually be a supervisor standing there with a stopwatch at times. Is that true? Yes, yes. <laughs> and, uh, you know, sometimes, you know, it's uh, we would get undermanned. You know, a couple people called in sick, and it's just those days, I'm sure, is when the most damage happens because, you know, it it it, it really makes you not as careful. And, uh, yeah, I saw a lot of packages get damaged and sure. it, it's, you know, I, I probably caused a few, um, <laughs> it's never on purpose, sure, but, uh, it's more of a time crunch thing. You and know, then, if they gave their guys more time, uh, not necessarily paid them more, but gave a lot of them more time to do it, you know, that probably decreased their damage sure. significantly, you know, um, but, uh. I guess things are a little different now. It's a little more automated. Yeah. But, uh, but what about uh, when you'd see a, a box marked fragile, like a lot of these Pinewood Derby cars? Did that mean anything to you? Nothing. <laughs> it, it, you wouldn't have time. Yeah. Uh, read the label. You know, fragile could be on the other side of the box, or you know, you have enough time to read the label, split it. You know, what uh, county or what area it's going in, and, and then the box is gone. Sure. And, you know, then it's someone else's deal. So, um, you know, it gets looked at by a lot of different people, but you know, not everybody's going to see that yeah. that fragile sticker on there, and uh, and it's really hard to have people accountable. Right. Yeah. Especially you when know, so many so, hands touch it. But you know, any damage I get on cars, uh, I can't I can't complain too much because a little bit of karma probably coming <laughs> back to me. Sure. Sure. All right. Now. Um, you uh, you did not race in this uh, race this past weekend, correct? Uh, no, I've been working on some other uh, Pinewood Derby related uh, projects. You know, anytime I don't send in, I always feel sick on race day. You know, I I still watch the races and it's like, why didn't I send in? But you know, part of the reason was I, you know, I had a new street rod built for myself and uh, I I neglected to order or I forgot to order new wheels for it until it was too late. So. Gotcha. I was at least going to send in a new street rod, but uh, I'll, I'll be there next month. Okay, cool. Um, just in the street rods or street stock too? Um, probably street stock. I don't know if I'll be able to build a new one yet. It'll pro- probably still just be that uh, that tunnel vision car. Um, 
yeah, you know that that Prometheus car probably won't send that in. <laughs> sure. You know, it took. <laughs> la- it, it, I think it got last place. Uh, I didn't expect too much from it, honestly. Um, any any time of any time a car is a little different looking and you're trying new things, you know, you, you got to just take it with a grain of salt. So, right. It, it'll just be a shelf clean from now on, probably. Sure. Now, uh, over here at the Zebzab Speed Shop, we are having a, uh, a race on the 15th of February, and street rods have just been added in case you're uh, wanting to send out Snotty Scotty or something, give it a little run. Yeah, I mean... Yeah, I might do that. Cool. I might send out this new one. Uh, it's a Nissan Skyline GTR. Okay. Are you familiar with that car? No, I'm not. Yeah, it's a, well, it's like it's a legendary uh, Japanese supercar. It was, it was like a... It wasn't released in the United States. Okay. Like people are importing him now, but sure. uh, his nickname was Godzilla, so I think I'm going to call it Godzilla. But uh, nice twin it's... turbo straight six monster, you know. Cool. So I, I always liked the car. Yeah. But. So we're having this race, you know, with a good two week cushion between any league races. So uh, if you want to send in, well, you'll get it back in plenty of time to do any tweaking to it for sure. Now, um, and do you have a track, or do you just tune on a tuning board at your house? I have one. Um, a lot of guys are gonna uh, probably not like this, but I haven't set it up for two years. So. <sighs> you sound just like Mario. Uh, He's got one too that he hasn't assembled yet. I, th- I think yeah. Chief is well, the know, same it, way. It, it's assembled. Um, I have set it up. You know, I've got room to set up thirty-five. Okay, but that's going down my hallway with, uh, you know, cookie crumbs being dropped on it, and uh, you know, the, the cat chasing the cars down the down the hallway. So yeah. Um, you know, it, and also at that at that time, my track wasn't polished out like it should have been. Sure. And my cars were always faster, fresh off the tuning board, and then I could never quite get that first pass back. So, I just figured it was my track doing something to the wheels. So I sort of stopped. Wow. You know, and uh, I just send them fresh off the board now. Yes. But you know, I recently polished my track all out, and I might set it up. I'm not maybe before nationals or something like that. I might set it up, but. Sure. Uh, but I don't have an electronic start. I don't have a ESS or a solenoid start gate. So okay, yeah, um, yeah. But uh, yeah, that's a little disheartening to see that you're you're doing so well. Like Kinzer too. Kinzer doesn't have a track, and that guy is just a monster, you know. Although he does get to you know tune it at John's shop, but still, you, can you imagine if he had a track full time? Same with you, you know. If you're if you're doing this just on a tuning board, um, man, you'd really be crushing us. I think. Well, you know. I think if after you do it for a while, just on a tuning board, you know you, you know where all your steers are at if you've matched it, you know to the track, you know and, and your style of building, sure. um, and your wheel bases and stuff, and you can hit that pretty much. And then you're, uh, you know, listening to your car and listening to what your wheels do while it's on the tuning board. You know that's a big thing too, and you kind of get used to uh, knowing what's going to be fast, how the car releases when you let it go. Sure. You know. It, you know, any time I've had a fast car, it's like you could always tell the difference. Right when I release it on the tuning board, it sort of just jumps out, you know. Sure. And, um, and it probably sounds really quiet. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah, you know, or uh, I remember you busting out a stethoscope one race. <laughs> <laughs> Shh, that's a little secret. Yeah. <laughs> you got to listen to those cars. You got to know what the, you know, Mario's got this uh, Camaro uh, street rod that is so quiet. Uh, you, you can't even hardly hear it go down. It's uh, it's amazing how the quieter the car, the smoother it runs, you know. And and a lot of people don't pay attention to that. But yeah, definitely, if you've got a, a noisy car, you know, if if it's making noise, that's using energy to make that noise. Yeah, right. You know, and that's another thing about the wheel waves. I, I noticed, you know, right off the bat, the cars are quieter. Okay. Um, you know, it's muffling that sound, so. It, in that aspect, it's not necessarily a contributor, you know, to speed, but, uh, you know, it might have some anti, you know, vibrational qualities, sure. you know, stopping resonance before it really gets, I don't want to say out of control, I, I don't, but, uh, yeah, that's one thing I noticed it, they, they tend to run, they run quieter. It's, it's noticeable. Okay. Yeah. And then, um, so we're looking forward to seeing you at the nationals, hopefully, and then, um, just continued success with your street rods with, you know, you're building them, helping people out. Maybe you can make a few bucks on that. That'd be great. Anything else you want to talk about before we wrap this one up? Can I give a shout out? Absolutely. <laughs> uh, I like to say, uh, to my wife, I love you. She's a beautiful woman, you know, without, uh, 
without her, I wouldn't be doing, you know, I wouldn't be able to do this, you know, without her, her support of it. And, you know, without my beautiful kids and everything, you know, I, I wouldn't be at such a good place in my life, you know, right now. And also I'd like to give a shout out to, uh, Copperhead racing. He's a local racing buddy of mine. Um, he did a little bit of league racing, but he's really involved with scouting, helps a lot of kids out building their cars, and he's really busy this time of year helping kids out. So he does good things. So Awesome. Yeah, um, I recognize the name. So, yeah, definitely shout out to him and, and to your wife and family. That's awesome. Scott, I appreciate the time uh, to do this podcast with me, and uh, we look forward to seeing you on the track and hopefully getting uh, one of your cars here at the Zeebzob Speed Shop. And, again, anybody wants some help with the street rods, uh, just give Scott a quick PM and, and uh, he can work something out with you. All right, cool. It, you know, it, congratulations on this podcast cast idea. You know, it, I, th- I think it's a great thing. You know, like, like what you, I've heard you say before, you know, I, you know, I listen to them. Um, I listen to the Adam Carolla podcast, and uh, I'm really a big fan of the Joe Rogan podcast. You know, a little controversial sometimes. Uh, don't always agree with their opinions, but um, so it's sort of cool for me to actually be on a podcast, uh, especially dealing with Pinewood Derby when I listen to those a lot. So, um, yeah, I appreciate this opportunity. It's really cool. I'm, I'm glad you are offering this. You know, it's a, just another avenue for information, you know. Uh, new Pinewood Derby dad, not necessarily a league racer, want to sit there and, you know, get some useful information while he's, you know, doing the build. And I, I think it's a great thing. So. Cool. Yeah, I, I do appreciate you turning me on to some of these podcasts. I know you talked to, uh, or I talked to you, um, a while ago and you were, you were mentioning it and, uh, I didn't really know anything about podcasting at the time or, or, or whatever. But, um, now that I've kind of, uh, dipped my toe into it, I'm, I'm loving this. So, uh, I appreciate being able to reach out to guys like you and, and get you on here and, and get your thoughts. All right, cool. And, uh, you know, also, uh, you know, shout out to John, you know, uh, Derby Dad for Hire, you know, sure. for, uh, making all of our products, running a board, you know, and the league you know and a huge family so yeah uh, absolutely yeah without without him doing that we wouldn't be able to do this all right very cool all right uh all right, all right I'll, I'll see you on the board and uh hopefully at nationals all right so, awesome all right all right thank you Andy. all right man take care all right bye Okay, so that was Scott Black, known as Down for Derby. Um, that was my first phone interview here on the Zeebzob podcast. Had a couple technical difficulties that we were able to iron out, uh, but I thought it was really cool. So I'm, I was glad to be able to get Scott on the phone and, and be able to do a, a podcast interview with him. thought it was pretty cool there how he ended it with the shout-out to, uh, to his wife and family and... Uh, Along those lines, we do have another dedication of one of our beloved racers who was uh, missing his wife this week, and we'll end our podcast with that. Sometimes we wish for the better When we have it good as it gets Sometimes the grass isn't greener Soon as we find out we forget Sometimes a fool doesn't know he's a fool Sometimes a dog, he don't know he's a dog Sometimes I do stupid things to you When I really don't mean it at all Sometimes a man is gonna be a man It's not an excuse, it's just how it is Sometimes we're wrong, don't know that they're wrong Sometimes strong, ain't always so strong Sometimes a girl, it's gonna be a girl And she don't wanna deal with all the drama in your world Not those I don't mean to give it to you So girl, I'm sorry for the stupid things I wish I didn't do I do so Sometimes I wish I was smarter Wish I was a bit more like you Not making stupid decisions made at the last minute You live to regret when it's through 
Sometimes a fool doesn't know he's a fool. And sometimes a dog, he don't know he's a dog. And sometimes I do stupid things to you when I really didn't mean it at all. And sometimes a man is gonna be a man. It's not an excuse. It's just how it is. Sometimes we're wrong, don't know that they're wrong, but sometimes strong, just ain't always be strong. And sometimes a girl, it's gonna be a girl, but she don't wanna deal with all the drama in your world. God knows I don't need to give it to you. I'm sorry for the stupid things I wish I didn't do But I sometimes a fool doesn't know he's a fool Sometimes a dog, he don't know he's a dog And sometimes I do stupid things to you And I really didn't mean it at all At all Sometimes a man it's gonna be a man It's not an excuse It's just how it is and Sometimes we're wrong Don't know that they're wrong But sometimes strong Ain't always so strong And sometimes a girl It's gonna be a girl And she don't wanna deal with all the drama in your world That's no side don't mean I'm sorry for the stupid things I wish I didn't do, but I do. No, no, no. I love you, baby. <laughs>